Starfield takes place in the year 2330. Within its own fiction, the events of the game occur 20 years after. Two of the largest factions in the settled systems had a blood-soaked war over territorial control. And according to Todd Howard, Starfield is the culmination of 25 years of work at Bethesda. A little over 1,500 days ago, about four years, uh, this gaming rig was born with the arrival of the AMD Ryzen 9 3900 X CPU and my review of it. I have been using it ever since for my gaming rig. It's been fantastic. It's gone through a few permutations since then. Faster RAM, new liquid cooler, a few storage upgrades, and it served as host and test platform for a bunch of GPU and game reviews and game recordings that I use in my videos. It is, however, dead. A sudden and unexpected passing and extremely poor timing with friggin' Starfield on the horizon, one of the year's most hotly anticipated games, just about to pop, and my, my gaming rig dies. Press F to pay respects. However, all is not lost. The Aussie AMD team and the fine folks at ASRock have leapt to my rescue, heroic and mighty and just in bloody time as any dramatic rescue really should be. Witness ye a glorious pile of boxes that will very quickly now become a brand new gaming rig from which will pour forth Starfield at its very best and make me once again a very happy gamer. And let me show you all what Starfield will look like at its very best. It's ultimate form. Hello again, I am Blunty, and let's all have a chat about Starfield, its PC requirements and performance expectations. Can your PC kick its space butt? Have you been thinking about an upgrade or two or three? It seems for a lot of people, this game has been serving as a very good excuse to pull the trigger on some new hardware, new monitor, or new graphics card, or new CPU, or SSD upgrade. And AMD is, as I expect most of you will have already noticed, Starfield's exclusive PC partner. In fact, if you buy a new AMD CPU right now, or AMD GPU, you are going to get a free copy of Starfield to go with it, so that doesn't suck. So let's talk tech specs. My goal, of course, with this stuff is to run Starfield at its very ultimate super duper best. I mean, the game took a quarter of a century from idea to delivery, so it seems disrespectful not to reach for the metaphorical stars when exploring some fictional ones, right? Now, there's two sets of specs for Starfield. The standard, minimum, and recommended stuff you'll find on Steam, uh, and AMD have their own suggestions for more idealized targets to reach for as well. If I wanted to kick Starfield around at 1080p, AMD suggests a Ryzen 5 7600 and pairing that with an RX 7600, they call that a heroic experience. A lot of enthusiast gamers these days have moved on up to 1440p though, and for that, AMD suggests a Ryzen 7 7700X. You match that with a Radeon RX 6800 and you've got the Epic experience. I love these names. Although, a couple of days ago, AMD did just announce a pair of brand new 7000 series GPUs designed especially for 1440p gaming, so that advice might be changing. The published specs I'm talking about were published before that announcement was made. But should you desire a full fat 4K dive into the ocean of Bethesda crafted stars, a Ryzen 7 7800 X3D, regarded by many if not indeed most as the best gaming CPU you can snatch up right now, pair that with a Radeon RX 7900 XT and you will get the legendary experience. <laughs> I find it kind of interesting that they recommend the 7900 XT, even though these are AMD's own aspirational specs, because that's not even the best GPU they have on offer right now, sitting on the shelves. Which brings us to what I will be using. So, if you've not met before, please let me introduce you to the Radeon RX 7900 XTX, specifically the ASRock Phantom Gaming 24GB OC, a beast of a GPU which can boost clock up to 2,615MHz and can sustain 2,455MHz while gaming, which, as you may have guessed by the OC in the model name, is a fair chunk of overclock. Just right out of the box, bonus performance of the already best of the best AMD graphics cards. <laughs> I'm going to have a video focusing on just this GPU, so sub and bell and whatnot to make sure you're here for that because a little inside baseball here, but I have actually already done the build. Those are empty boxes and um, you're going to want to see what this GPU can do. And on the CPU side of things, AMD hooked me up with the Ryzen 7 7700X. Not the absolute golden gold chad of the 7800X 3D. 
Part of that is because, honestly, the 7900X3D is a little bit thin on the ground right now. There, are, <laughs> there aren't that many on offer, apparently, in Australian shores. But also, while the 7900X3D will outdo the 7700X in multi-core tasks, thanks largely to a higher clock speed and AMD's clever 3D vCache tech, which can indeed kick gaming along like you wouldn't believe, the 7700X is actually not all that far behind, really. It's just all right. Especially when we're already talking triple digit frame rate comparisons in gaming benchmarks and things. It's also cheaper and more power efficient too, with a 15 watt lower TDP. And both chips are 8 core 16 thread jobbies at the same Zen 4 architecture. So alongside that, I need a new RAM as my old DDR4 stuff wouldn't do the trick in the new motherboard and with the Zen 4 CPU. So in comes the ever trusty Kingston with a kit of their Fury DDR5 6800 mega transfers a second RAM, 32 gigs worth twice what you need for Starfield. I love overhead. And finally, the all-important bones of the system, the motherboard. Meet the ASRock X670E Steel Legend. Ticking every last want box I had for a motherboard and then some. It has an M.2 PCIe Gen 5 slot, which I've been wanting to move to for a while now. I've had some office reviews for crazy fast SSDs. I just, I've had to say no to because I didn't have a test platform worthy of them, but now I do. And ASRock have been pretty smart about how they've designed the motherboard for this thing too. The slot for it's right underneath uh, the CPU, so very, very short signal path to maintain absolute top speed possible. And it has a nice chunky heatsink cover over it too. I really appreciate that. Alongside that are three more M.2 PCIe 4 slots. Perfect, as I can now run all M.2 storage for my game storage, my local video capture and my system drive, all running on independent drives to stay out of each other's way. The GPU's home is a PCIe 5 by 16 slot, which right now isn't a game changer for GPUs, honestly. But again, the headroom for a little future proofing is not something I'm sad about. We're a little while away from PCIe Gen 5 being needed for GPUs, but just in case. <laughs> Around back, you've got a, just a fistful of USB in various flavors, a 3.2 Gen 2 by 2 Type-C, 3.2 Gen 2 Type-A, 10 USB 3.2 Gen 1s in total, six on the back, four more on the front. If you've got a case that can do that, mine can't, I've just got two, but yeah. uh, there's two LAN ports, both Realtek chips. One's a 2.5 gig, the other one's a one gig. I don't know why I would need both of those, but I have them. I am, of course, not a savage, so of course I run my network wired to all my gaming machines, but there is an 802.11ax Wi-Fi 6E sitting in this machine alongside the even more useful Bluetooth 6.2, so very fast, very low latency uh, wireless jobbies going on there. Party tricks include an attachable graphics card support structure for nuking the sag on today's beefier GPUs, which... And it feels like all motherboards should really just have one of these as standard. This should be standard equipment from this point on, right? Considering how chunky some GPUs are getting, pretty sweet idea. Unfortunately, uh, it, it didn't fit inside the case I'm using. The NZXT case I'm using has a little bar that hides a lot of the cable crimes. Um, and that, yeah, the, the, the two conflicted, which was uh, disappointing. I got this awesome new feature, this innovation from ASRock, and I can't use the damn thing. Like most of the other parts, it's just a little bit overbuilt for what I really need. Uh, and I really, really appreciate that sort of going forward. It's always best to buy a little bit extra for what you actually need. So you've got some padding in the days to come or the years to come even. So outside of the AMD sort of idealized stuff, there are aspirational uh, builds they suggest for various performance levels and resolutions and stuff. What are the back of the box stuff? What do you actually need at a bare minimum? Well, uh, you need a 2600X, which is what, five, six years old at this point. So pretty reasonable and a hell of a little CPU. I had one of those myself. On the GPU side of things, you want a Radeon RX 5700, which is a, you know, a fairly basic GPU from again, several years back. Most enthusiast gamers will have something around close to the performance of that. On the Nvidia side of things, you're looking at a 1070 Ti-ish, I think. And if you're looking for the recommended experience, which we don't know what they're actually targeting, but it's probably high settings, 1080p, 60fps. Uh, because that's just what you have to sort of default to in lieu of any other information. For that, you want a 3600X CPU and an RX 6800 XT, or on the Team Green side of things, the RTX 2080. So a reasonably beefy CPU. We're anticipating this game be what we call CPU capped. So, and basically what that means is, you know, between the two things, the CPU and the GPU, 
The CPU is probably going to be the limiting factor. That's going to be the bottleneck uh, because of the way Bethesda games tend to work and the creation engines tends to, to work. Um, the CPU is going to be doing a lot more work with, with you know, simulations and AI and physics and all that sort of stuff. And the GPU is going to be sort of waiting on the CPU to do its thing. So if you're going to upgrade something first, if you're falling behind, CPU is probably the better idea. And in a recent leak, which had some uh, details on patch notes for one of the pre-release uh, patches that came through, there was also a note about this game uh, running. Uh, it will run on things like the ROG Ally and the Steam Deck, both of those running AMD Harbor as well. Uh, but the, they, they are both you know, technically below minimum spec, so the experience may suffer. I do have an ROG Ally. I will be seeing if I can get it to a playable state like I have done with other games before. I mean, I got Cyberpunk running with full ray tracing on the ROG Ally. I'm sure I can get somewhere with Starfield on it. So here we are, out with the old, in with the new. The build is done, just in time for Starfield. So how does Starfield perform? Well, obviously I can't tell you yet because if you look at the data publication on this video, it's before Starfield launches into early access. So we'll have to wait and see on that. You can come to my Twitch stream and see me do it live. Uh, on launch day, or you can sub and bell and do the thing around here and wait for the video where I cover the performance in a little more detail and go through the settings and show you some comparison stuff between, you know, different settings levels and compare it to the Xbox and compare it to running on the ROG Ally if you can get it running there. All that kind of stuff is coming to you. So let me know in the down below, how do you think your machine will measure up? Where do you think you'll be in the performance? You're aiming for 1080p, 1440p? You're going to go all out for 4K like me? Uh, you know, what's, what's the weakest component in your rig? What would you like to upgrade next? I'm curious, because I've seen a lot of people talk about a lot of different upgrades they want to do on their various machines, uh, keeping an eye on things in the various communities, having a chat about this game. Very exciting. Thank you very much for watching. I am bloody thank you again to AMD Australia and New Zealand, and of course, ASRock for the generous rescue. <laughs> a box full of parts to save me. From, from the misery of not playing the brand new game at its ultimate new best and having one bit of my mission critical equipment here, uh, DOA, which was rather limiting, as you might imagine. So thank you for that. And thank you, of course, to the patrons scrolling up above there, whose above and beyond support is also amazing and excellent and superb. And see you in the stars.